Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting oil painting video. My name is John, this is John Monarchic Fine Art, and let us begin. I hope everybody's enjoying this. I don't know where you're all at. I'm in the Midwest, about 26 miles west of Chicago. And I'll tell you what, it's 56 degrees and sunny. It's absolutely gorgeous outside. I'm loving it. Can't believe this weather. It's actually perfect. Okay, so we are going to start the same way and a little different. Okay, same way by a nice thin, thin mixture with our number two bristle brush. Actually, no. We'll use number 10 bristle brush. It's a 12 by 16 stretched linen um, canvas and it's oil prime, so it'll only take oil or alka colors. But we'll use a smaller brush today. I have something in mind, which I usually don't. Um, I want to have like a nice lush green forest. I might have a little hill or a mountain. I don't know. But we're going to start out. Usually, remember, it's sap green and paints gray with the uh, walnut alka medium. Okay, we're going to do blizzard and crimson and viridian. Okay, what do you think of that? Blizzard and crimson and viridian. That sounds kind of cool. So have a nice watered down mixture. Actually, it's not water, it's, you know. Okay. See, I just... Okay. One of the things about art, when you create it, you have to be flexible. I love sap green and paints gray together. But I'll tell you what, last couple times I was messing around with uh, Viridian and um, Blizzard and Crimson. I don't know. I don't know if I'm sold yet, but I'm liking it. Okay, what I had in mind was something kind of like this. Starting there. Okay. Starting up here. It's not going to be a waterfall, but it's going to be roughish water because it is coming downhill. Okay. For a little bit. And I know I've preached before how the far bank is straight. Because of the angle we're coming in here, it's not necessary. And once we start adding blue to it, it'll kind of fix itself if the perspective is off. Because right now this is just what we're doing here. Okay. So. What I was thinking about doing, and I don't know why, it just been in my head um, with deciduous trees all over the place. Usually I do those pine trees with the number two bristle and then kind of tap them in and they look really good. I want to try something else. So what I'm going to do, i make this whole thing tree line. Okay. And this dark is really good. The red is really good. All that stuff is really good. I'm going to make it bigger as I come towards me. Okay? So I want them going into the distance. It's a little too soupy. And that should hopefully give us a pretty nice perspective. So all the way over here. Ooh, that's too much red. There we go. All the way over here. Whoa. I can put that down for a little bit. That's where it's going to be a big haunted trip. Okay. Now, as you can see, we're not going to have really a hell of a lot of sky today. That's okay. We are going to have a really nice stream. Stream or maybe a mini river. I don't know how you want to pronounce it or categorize it. Okay. So that color is looking good already. This, I'm going to have a little bit of raw sienna in there. But I'm also going to keep the same alizarin and um, viridian in it. So we'll keep doing that. Now I'll add a little bit of the sienna, brown it up a little bit. So 
See how that works? See, one of the things, and I try to tell anybody that wants to listen, when you're starting out, especially in oil painting, pre preconceived notions is cool. Okay, you gotta have an idea where you're going when you're starting out. Okay, um, once you get into it more, you don't have to. You can just kind of let the painting develop itself. But in the beginning, have an idea anyways of what you're looking for. And don't be afraid to put the real thin paint on and put it on in such a way that, I don't want to say haphazard, but maybe in a way, as it is a little bit. I mean, if you look, I'm not taking any special care or time. I got the brush I'm holding over head like this, and I'm throwing thin color on, and I'm loving it. One, it's a lot of fun. And two, there are no mistakes right now. Okay, there, it's impossible to make a mistake at this stage. Okay, where's your mistake? There is none. You've got your stream slash river. You've got a sky eventually. You've got your ground. Okay, where's the mistake? There is none. And you're slapping color on. Okay, it's like you're a kid. And I tell you what, I just turned 58 years old. Being a kid once in a while is not a bad thing. Been an adult for a long time. Some of you a lot longer than me. Maybe some of you watching, not as long. But after a while, you just like to play. That's how you learn how to paint. You get some instruction, like I'm trying to give, and a lot of other talented YouTube artists. And then you just keep working at it. You practice. You just, you have fun with it. Okay? If you're not having fun oil painting, you're doing it wrong. Okay, I wiped off the brush. And I've got no, uh, I didn't clean it, just wiped it. Get all the thick stuff off. Going right into my French ultramarine. A little bit of blue-gray titanium white. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make that across the top. And then we're going to do some stuff that's really kind of cool that I like. I'm going to bring it in. Get it down here so it doesn't fall. I've actually had canvases fall off before. I don't like using and just kind of anchor in the canvas. I probably should, but I, for some reason, just don't like doing it. And I don't know why, but that's just the way I am. Okay, if you notice, I'm trying to just get sky where it's supposed to be, okay? And yes, I'm mixing my sky colors with the Viridian and the, um, and the, um, the Lizard. I don't care. I'm gonna refine this forest tree line and then I'll tap in foliage looking stuff okay before I actually highlight to make it look like it's decision to trees and I'll show you what I mean I'm rarely ever gonna tell you I'm doing something without explaining exactly what the heck it is I'm doing because I know what it's like and I remember learning how to paint and um, the worst thing in the world that can have anybody that's trying to teach you how to do something is they'll explain it in such a way that you don't necessarily understand it and they don't actually demonstrate it. And I had that happen, so I try my best not to do that to anybody I'm trying to teach. Okay, so we got a dirty brush. I'm going to put this to the side for right now. Then I'm going to use our nice two inch just a brush that we normally do this with on the bigger canvases. You can do it on a 12 by 16. I just, for some reason, I wanted to use the other one. I don't know why. Okay, and the only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna smooth out the sky, okay? Once we got the sky smoothed out, then we can go back in with our other brush, put in the tree line exactly where we want it, and then we can start tapping in the foliage stuff I was mentioning. But just little crisscross strokes. And yes, you're gonna have a green sky. Well, I take that back. Green in the sky. Doesn't matter. I love it. Scared the crap out of me the first time I did it by mistake. Because that's what it happened. It was by mistake. And uh, I love it. Now, I'm hoping, really hoping, you can see what I see um, through the video. But I see it in person. Let me see back here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This is cool. This is cool. Okay. That's what I wanted to show you. I was hoping to show through. 
Okay, so you see how I got this guy all the way down here, down here, up here, whatever. And this guy's a mixture of a little of everything. Okay, this is what I was hoping would show through. The silhouette of where all my trees were. Okay, so now I'm taking that same soupy mixture I had, Viridian and Alizarin, going back, putting them in. I want color to be a little, not a lot, but a little runny. better. There's a touch of a waterfall here, the way it ended up going. It wasn't intentional, but you know me. I love waterfalls, so that's not going to be any skin off my butt. I don't care. I love it. Okay. So, check this out. Yep, it's looking up good. Now, we're gonna take our two inch brush. I mean, if you thought we weren't gonna use the two inch, you were sadly mistaken. You obviously haven't seen enough of my videos. Uh, and here's the thing, when you're starting out and any time in your art career, use the biggest brush you're comfortable with. It took me a while, but I'm comfortable with the two inch now in almost anything. So we're gonna take it, and it's still dirty from when I blended the sky, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna take it in this way. Let me see how I can do this. That way, and I'm gonna, and that crunch of the brush is gonna be the foliage. Now that's not gonna be the only foliage we have. That's gonna be our impression. Then we'll put some trunk-like stuff in there, some branches and everything else. And then we'll go over it with the highlights that'll actually make the trees. So I'll show you what I mean. You wanna hold on. And that's one of the reasons why you want this wet, soupy-ish paint. And the other thing is, too, I'm doing this all the way down to the bottom because you don't know exactly where your foliage will start and stop and everything else. You're going to have a lot of this as background. You want to keep a lot of this as background against the highlighted thicker paint because that just gives it this real nice moody look. But you see the way all this is starting to look like actual foliage. And then you got these different values, these different tones, these different colors all over the place. And it just, it's where the magic happens. It's where the magic happens. And the other thing too now is it's gonna disperse all this wet color into the canvas into the layers beneath it, so it's not gonna be as soupy. Okay. Get the bottoms. Okay, now I just wanna work that in. Did it come off? It's a big bristle. Let's see if it's got into the, there it is. Sometimes these puppies are hard to see, but I knew I saw something. Okay. I abuse the crap out of my brushes, as you can see, so I don't buy the most expensive when I do this stuff. Okay, so, there we go. Now that is beautiful. I love it. And I know you're not supposed to say that about your own stuff. I'm sorry, it's. It took me years to get to the point where I can get the paintings to kind of do what I'm looking for them to do. And they don't always do it. <sighs> Out of all the paintings I do, I still have, you know, 15% of them, maybe 20%. Thank God it's not any worse, I don't believe. That just absolutely do not work. And then I have to um, wipe it off and start all over again. You saw one I did at the 1216. Here's a 5x7 that I messed up. Not that long ago, maybe a week. And uh, I 
scraped it off, wiped it off. Now I'm letting it dry completely, and then I'll redo it. And that's my bird. Actually, it's not my bird, it's my wife's bird, Raphael. My wife is out doing errands on this beautiful Sunday. And when mommy's not around, sometimes he gets a little noisy. So I'm hoping he does not uh, bother you on the video because I don't think he's going to stop until Laura gets home. Okay, so next thing I want to do is I'm going to take the palette knife. You know, I'm not going to take the palette knife. I'm going to use a fan brush for this. I was going to use the palette knife for the branches and stuff and the trunks, but I'm going to use the... Uh... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap right in. Thicker trunks over here, thinner over here because it's going back further. A little heavier as you go down, a little lighter touch when you go up. And this is using raw sienna and uh, Payne's Gray. Now this, the beauty of this part here, this really doesn't have to be anything major technical. Oops, some sap green in there by mistake. That's okay. You can, uh, you don't have to be precise. You don't have to go all the way. But you do have, with a force like this, you know you've got trunks, you've got trees, you've got branches, you've got everything all over the place. I'm going to follow the river so to speak. These, like you to I told you, I'm not going to have that. I'm not going to have them that um, thick because I want them to look like they're further away. Step back a little. There we go. Okay. Now this I will wipe off and clean off. Why both? Okay, check it out. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe with the shine you can, or I'm not sure. So there's still a thick amount of paint on here. I put some sometimes if it's a color I can use again. I'll wipe it off on the um, palette so I don't waste it. Other times I can't. Regardless, you want to get rid of that paint off that brush. And the reason why is you don't want to gum up your brush cleaner that much. So the thick paint that's left on your brush, wipe it off on your palette or wipe it off on a paper towel and then go ahead and wash your brush. It'll just make your brush cleaner go a lot further. Okay. Now, just to have consistency in this, I'm going to take the fan brush. I'm going to put it in the water right now. Right now, it's a little tough for me to gauge exactly where I'm at with how I want these elements to interact. And the water is always a main focal point in my work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the water in first. Well, not first, but right now. Once I get the water in, then I'll be able to gauge what I want with branches, how much highlight I want on the trunks. Is it going to be a little more dense? It'll just, it'll put something next to it. Because right now we just have a lot of white and viridian. That's not going to be there. Okay, so titanium white, French ultramarine, and a little blue gray. Which sounds an awful lot like the identical we had in the sky. The difference is we were running into green up here with the forest. Ooh, my bad. We have green here. They should look very similar. And they do. It's a little brighter here. But once we get into the green, it'll dull it out a little bit. I don't need to add green to my brush because there's an awful lot of it up here. I'm just getting this stark white kind of out of here. 
A lot of people tone their canvases. I never got into that. I'm not saying it's right or wrong or anything like that. I mean, I may get into it one day. I may try it. Um, some people swear by it. And one of the things about art, one of the many things I like, I love, is it's a never-ending journey. So you're always kind of... If you're doing it right, you're always trying new things, progressing, things like that. And yes, you see brown in my water. You know why? Because it's surrounded by brown. So it's going to have that little hint here and there. Water is the color of its surroundings. Okay, now we're going to have to just be a little careful. Now we're going to do a little bit more wiping, not cleaning the brush, but wiping. Because I want to get that color in. A little bit more blue, a little bit more white so I get it opaque. But you see how that green is? See how I want to get that blue in. I don't want to get, now I'm not going to add any more blue, it's just going to be white. So now what I'm going to do, let me get it. Sorry, that's my palette kind of tapping on the table I use. You know, I don't want this solid here like you see it, um, but I have to put that in. As a start, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean out the brush because I want a very clean, dry brush. And then you got to kind of figure out how water works. The closer it is to the falls, the rougher it is. These are not huge little forest falls. So it's going to have the rough stuff here and then right here. This is going to be rough because it's moving still, but it's not going to be as rough here as it is here. So we're going to smooth this out a little bit, but still showing a little bit of movement. And the way we do that is similar to the way we do clouds, which we're not doing in this particular one, but very similar. We're going to take a dry brush of whatever, but in this particular case, I'm going to use the same fan brush. And then we're going to gently caress. Now, we're going to do it light enough where it's not going to blend with the color underneath. Okay, even though both are wet. The lighter it is that you have your touch, it'll move the paint, it'll manipulate the paint, but it won't blend the paint. Okay, now watch what I mean. See how that just moves the paint? And now, you have a real nice transition from real rough to moving, but not crazy rough. Let's see how that looks on video. Yep, that's how I want it to look. That's how I want it to look. That's what I want. Forgive my really bad Italian accent. But I do have a lot of fun doing these videos. I think it's an absolute blast. I'm up to 432 subscribers. I don't know if that was, I don't believe I was that high last week when I did a video and was talking to you guys. 432. I mean, that's just, that number still boggles my mind. Yeah, I know. There's people with art videos with, you know, half a million. But 
I never thought anybody wanted to watch my videos. And I got 432 people that actually subscribed to my channel. It's like, oh, this is totally cool. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to take just a little brush if I can find it. There it is. It's a very tiny little craft brush fan. Bristles are rel so relatively stiff. The only thing I'm going to do with this, I'm going to put a few branches in. So I'm going to use the same mixture as everything else, and I'm just going to touch. Okay, you see how nice and thin that gets? And I don't need a lot. The foliage is going to cover a lot. But I just want where the foliage may or may not go through. You know, in real life, there are branches on trees. So I'm just putting stuff in here and there, and then foliage will cover most, most of it, but not all of it. And that's kind of what I'm doing. I just want some areas. And then I'm going to highlight some of these big trunks. And then the highlights, I'm not going to do all of them because of the size. And this is a farther away, but I'm going to do some. And that'll really help it too. Now, if I was doing just a big tree, I would be a lot more careful with the branches, okay? But because this is a forest, and the majority of this is going to be covered anyway, I'm just putting these in... Now this, I will use the term haphazardly, doesn't matter, but I just want them to where if I do, because I don't want to cover everything with the highlight. I want to keep a lot of that deep, beautiful background color. So there's going to be areas where I don't have it. And I want the branches to show through like it would in real life. I'm not a hyper-realist painter, but I am kind of, I don't know, maybe semi-realist. I never wanted to do exact copies of anything, but I like to give my impressions of it and have it look, you know, reasonably good. And I'll put some here. Got a glare today on my, I hope it doesn't show up for you guys badly. But it's getting a little annoying. Trying to, uh, Let's see this. Maybe I'll lift it up a little bit instead of down. Maybe that's a little better. It's just little branches, little bushes, and stuff like that will be around. Okay. So, the next thing we're going to do, and I already gave it away, is we're going to put highlight on the big trunks. We're gonna use the fan brush that we use to put them in, wherever you want it to be. This is a very dark-ish scene. You don't have the direct sunlight, you don't see a lot of sun. So we'll just say the light that is out there is coming from the left. So the left side is what will, the left side is what we will highlight. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to slide it over and I'll show you what I mean. But you want it on the left edge and I'll show you why in a second. And if the light was coming from the other side, then the right edge. Yeah, I'll do this little one too. And again, this isn't going to show everywhere, but in some areas it will. I hope my big head's not in the way. So you can see this. And then the rest of these, I'm not going to bother. They're too small. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I am washing that brush. I'm going to need it for the foliage. 
Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is that same brush that we just put in all those little twigs and stuff, that same little craft brush. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna touch the white and just gently, remember, just like we did here, very light touch, just move it over. off the brown and like I said a very light touch because these trunks are still wet too so if I went heavy it would just blend in see if that even shows up actually it does cool okay so normally I like going all over the place in a painting and not just settling in one area at a time but <coughs> excuse me we're on a bit of a roll so I am going to finish off this forest okay I'm going to use the fan brush, but I'm only going to use that much of it, okay? And I'm going to apply it like this. And I'm going to use a little bit of Viridian on my brush, but I already have a lot on the... And I'm just going to tap. See how, they, see how I'm doing that? want it to blend a little bit with what's in there and you want it to have some thick here and there you want to just kind of make a variety of it then you want to just go with shapes okay and you can see I'm going like this a little bit of canopy shapes you're not going to paint every leaf but you are going to be painting leaf shapes, leaf clumps. So, you know, you're going to paint that which has a thousand leaves in it. You know, that which has a thousand leaves in it. You don't want to paint every leaf. One, it'll take you five years to finish a painting. Two, I think you'll lose your eyesight. At least I know I would. And the other thing is, too, you don't want to hide everything that you've worked on to this point. Look at all that dark I'm leaving in there. And, they can, and you can see all these branches sticking out in different places. You know, that's what you want. And again, I'm only using half the brush. I'm going to refine these once I get done, but the first thing I do is get the foliage everywhere. Once I get the foliage on the whole forest, then I'll go back and see the areas I need to make sure I refine, put on, whatever the case may be. Okay, now, this one, for these, I'm going to add some sap green to darken it a little bit because they're further away.
Go. Let me step back and see how we're looking. Ooh, that's looking real nice. Yeah, I'm really liking that. Okay, so, just as before, more yellow in here. Just in areas that I think... Because you remember, when you're going in a forest, forest reserve, whatever, you know, you don't have distinct when one tree starts and one tree stops. So the foliage just kind of intermingles with each other. That's kind of the impression I'm trying to do here. And then down here, I'm going to have bushes and stuff of a different color. just like that I really like that okay so I have asked a little bit of thick paint on there just wipe it off and then wash the brush there we go okay now I'm gonna take a funky little brush funky f-u-n-k-y little brush I found at Hobby Lobby, and I think I told the story before, I bought it for a specific use, and it failed at that use miserably. It was just, it was terrible. And I should have seen it as I bought it, because it wasn't packaged really. Uh, it's where the bristles were um, hidden, so I, able, I was able to see them, and I didn't even pay attention. And it turns out, it's one of my favorite foliage brushes. It's like 257, 247. I mean, it's just nice and cheap. I've had it for a couple of years now. And, and that's this little, whatever the heck this thing is. These beat up bristles and stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a decent amount of yellow and alizarin crimson flowers. I'm going to have some bluebells and all that other stuff. So I'm going to start putting some of that color in here. And then I'll put grass right there. So I'll start with Lizard and Crimson. And I'm putting them up, as you can see. I'm putting them up the tree lines a little bit. Here, not as thick. Not as hard, whatever you want to call it. There we go. Okay, now we don't have to clean the brush for this one, but you do need to wipe it pretty good. And at least get the bulk, the thick alizarin off. And then go straight into and tap straight down into um, Windsor Lemon. Is a great color. Now, this is going to have a beautiful orange that you'll see in a minute. You want to go real light. You don't want this color because it's a bit of a subdued scene. You don't want to tap it hard and get that color real hard. You don't want it to kind of come out in your face. You want it to where it's subtle, but you still see that orange. And that is your own preference. Mine is exactly this. I don't want it. This There's nothing that's going to be vibrant on this painting. It's going to be lush, as you can tell. Okay, the painting almost has a little wet feel to it, which is one of the things I was after. But it's not going to be 
vibrant colors in your face. There we go. And then when I do the bluebells, that'll break it up a little bit. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna do that right now. All these wildflowers you see all the time if you go out in nature. And the thing about it is, it just, my wife and I are members um, at the Morton Arboretum. We have been for years. My brother actually, him and his wife, Carol, turned us on to the Arboretum a long time ago. And uh, it's so beautiful. And you can't believe that it's 24 miles from the city limits of Chicago. And it's absolutely breathtaking, the stuff they have there. Just words don't do it any justice. They take meticulous care of it. It's, it's beautiful. And uh, I'll go there and paint. I'm going to do some videos this spring and summer from over there. So hopefully you'll enjoy those. Okay, so now we're going to go with green and yellow. I'm going to tap this in. I'm going to do this all the way up. Forgive my big mug in the way. Uh, with this glare, which I don't understand why I have today, I have to uh, get a little closer than I would normally. Okay. I was going to make this rocks at first, but I think I'm just going to make this grasses. Now, for the moment, this, what is this? Number eight fan brush is the workhorse, and it will be for another couple of moments. Now, I didn't ruin it, but I have a couple of areas that I got into the water that doesn't look natural that I want to get rid of. Again, this is baby soft touch, okay? Not even the full thing, just, you know, a little corner of it. And I'll show you up here. Okay, so you got that smooth, and I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so... Now we take white and put it in the waves of all the running water. Okay. Over here, same thing. Step back. Yep, that'll work. This one right here. There we go. Okay. So we've got the majority of the painting done. We just got the foreground, which looks a little more daunting than it actually is, especially since we're going to use a pretty big brush to lay in um, grass. And we're going to have some wildflowers and everything else because we've got to match some of this. These will be a little more vibrant, but they're still not going to be crazy like some of my other paintings. Okay, so what I'm going to do...
green, a little viridian, a little, uh, let's see, viridian, lemon yellow, lizard and crimson, and all kinds of stuff. If it looks like I'm not careful with the colors, you're right. I'm not. There we go. Bring this up a little bit. Now this I am tapping a little bit harder because I do want to get a little bit of a blend in here. I'm using all kinds of paint right now, whatever's on my palette. Well, let's see how that's looking. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. So, the next thing I'm gonna do, go back to that good old fan brush after I get some more color. One of the things you find out when you do it, when you're a landscape artist, especially if you are very partial to spring and summer like I am, you go through a ton of yellow. And I mean a ton of yellow. Okay. So, next thing we're going to do is Payne's Gray. We're going to basically make what's going to support our flowers. And it's going to hold the river and the falls in. Got to have something to hold the water in. At first I was thinking I might put in rocks and stuff. I didn't feel it for the rocks for this particular one. more flowers all over the place and I think I lied to you by mistake I am gonna have some vibrant colors over here I gotta put a little bit more contrast in I'm gonna tap in a bunch of flowers that are gonna have a little bit more oomph to them I apologize I didn't mean to lie to you but it's like anything else in paint in painting you improvise as you come. Or like Gunny Highway said in, uh, oh God, what was that movie that uh, Clint Eastwood was in? He played Gunny Highway. I forget which, but he always said improvise, overcome, adapt. And then painting, that's about as true as it can be. Damn, it's going to drive me crazy. I don't remember the name of the movie. I love the movie too. Plays a crusty old, almost retired Marine. Gunnery Sergeant Thomas Highway. I remember all that. I don't remember the name of the movie. Anybody remembers the name of that movie? Would you please put it in the comments below so it, I don't lose sleep over it because I'm going to. I'm going to obsess over it until I remember the name. Okay, so we've got everything ready the flowers we're going to do those the same way we did here no difference is we're just going to make it more vibrant how do you make it more vibrant 
but you have to color in harder. Thicker paint. Over there, not as much. Uh oh, my wife's home. I can hear the car in the garage. Okay. I'm gonna wipe it. I apologize for the way I'm gonna handle this, but I'm not very good at editing videos, so I'm just gonna yell out, hey, I'm doing a video. Hey, I'm doing a video. Okay. Doing the same thing, the same colors, everything is the same except the amount of paint I put on. This is similar, this isn't, and that's because it's in the foreground. And now I'm gonna take a couple of pieces in different places. There's an area in the Morton Arboretum that's very similar to what I just painted here, now that I think about it. It's not exact by no stretch. Like I told you before, I can't really do exact. <sighs> but it's where the water isn't coming down, but it's more of a horizontal to start with. And it's got these wildflowers probably mid-June. And it's got every color imaginable. And they're all over the place in this harmonious chaos that is just incredible. If I get a chance, because it doesn't last that long, I will uh, take some pictures and then maybe do a couple of paintings from there just to show you what I'm talking about. The beauty that you can find even in a place close to Chicago, it's incredible. Okay, the bluebells I'm going to do are going to be darker than those only because it's foreground. And again, thicker paint. It's still my French ultramarine in white. Nice about bluebells, they go everywhere. Okay, I think we got a painting. So I hope everybody had a great time. Hope you learned something. If you, uh, this video was any value to you and you're still watching, give it uh, a thumbs up and th consider subscribing. I do videos once uh, a week on Sundays. I'm possibly going to do two a week starting next week or the week after. I haven't decided yet. Depends on my schedule. So hope everybody has a great week and I'll talk to you later.